Good morning, Anchor Church. How we doing today? Well, uh, thanks for braving the potential. Who knows what's coming? I don't. I mean, you, you, church is happening. Is what's happening? I woke up this morning. Teresa goes, "There's a storm coming." I say, "Sure is." His name's Jesus. This is the difference between Teresa and I. We wake up on a Sunday, and we call Teresa Captain Safety, by the way, in our family. Teresa's always 10 steps ahead of all of us on safety precautions. So today it was the connect table will be over in the fellowship hall. We're not putting out all the flags. The entrance to kids will look definitely different because the Lord is coming back today through the wind and the waves, and we will be prepared. And I'm like, you get a little wet. But I'm glad you're at church today, man. Welcome home to Anchor. We're glad you're with us today. And uh, man, many of you are new to Anchor. It's your first time here and your last time here after that second song we did. You're like, I don't know about this church. I just, I don't know. My theme for the year is rock. And I'm like, we're doing a rock song today. And Franklin and the team, they're, they're, they're working on another song we wrote that we're, uh, we're gonna have at the end of this month, another rock song. You think that one was rocking, J.D.? You wait, you wait, bro. And hey, Anchor, I'm so excited. Our new, can I, I don't know what Franklin's going I, I, our new album that we recorded live on our two-year anniversary, the release date is set for February 17th. Is that right, Franklin? 18th, February 18th? 18th, okay. And, and oh yeah, guys, it's incredible. It's incredible, I'm so excited. You, you have no idea, it's so, so exciting. It's that same week of our Soul Sisters Conference. A lot of, a lot of good stuff happening, so I'm, I'm excited. But man, welcome to Anchor. We're so glad you're with us today. I'm gonna jump right in. Can I jump right in? I got, we got a big day today, lots of stuff. To, that, what a sweet time of worship, though. What a great time of worship day, J.D. and the team. Just a sweet time. And uh, Jess, thanks for leading us to that, and Franklin and Pedro, and what, what a great time today. But our theme for the year is rock. Somebody say rock. Now, I, I, I told you the reason why our theme is rock. It's, it's a twofold reason. The first reason is because when I was growing up, I loved rock music. Like, like, like ZZ Top, Def Leppard, uh, Motley Crue. You're like, Sean, was that like before Christ? No, that was with him. Um, I just, I love, I love rock music. As a matter of fact, uh, many of you don't know this about me. My, my freshman year of high school, I was an exchange student to Osaka, Japan. And uh, when I went over to, I, I did some language lessons before I went over to Osaka, Japan, but still, J Japanese is a very hard language to learn, and, and I didn't know a whole ton of it when I went over there, and I would travel to this private school with the family I was with every single day, and, and I didn't know a lot of Japanese, so my parents told me, my parents said before I went, I had a, they bought me a Walkman, many of you are like, what is a Walkman? That is, what is a Walkman? It's a little thing that played cassette tapes. You're like, what is a cassette tape? They're in museums. You'll see them one day. <laughs> and my mom took me to Walmart and said, you can pick out any album you want. And see, back in the day, I, I had to listen to Christian music. So the fact that she said, any album you want, I was like, oh, we're about to get real. And so I picked up a Van Halen cassette. And I said to my mom, I just did one of these like, she goes, oh, yes, baby, anything you want. Because you know, she was going to miss me and everything. And I played that Van Halen album every single day on the way to this private school in Osaka, Japan. And, and the reason why rock is such a, a big theme for us this year is twofold. Number one is because every time I listen to rock music, I can't help but like bang my head. Like I wish I had hair, Stuart. I wish I had hair so I could do the, you know, I, I actually I did this so much uh, that it fell out right here in this section right here. <laughs> And, and I couldn't help myself because you, you work out, you listen to rock music and you're just like, that second song, when it started, many of you were like, I don't know this song, but let's go. You, you don't even know. But rock music makes you, so this will be a year for us to be passionate. It's gonna be like, we're going to church. That's what I'm talking about. So, what, what, so, so twofold. First is, is we're gonna be passionate this year. Second is the rock is Jesus Christ, the solid foundation of Jesus Christ. So this is the year that will be passionate to hang on to the rock of Jesus. This is the year we're gonna be, it's, it's a big church word called discipleship. I feel like nobody really taught, you know what disciple is? Disciple is becoming like Jesus, it's following Jesus. And so many of us, it's not that you don't want to be like Jesus, we don't know how. 
to be like Jesus. And the church, I feel like today, Big C Church doesn't talk so much about how you do it. They go, you should be like Jesus, but don't teach us the practical ways. So our hashtag this year for Anchor is practicing the practical. So every sermon, every series for the whole year, you will have to practice the practical. Well, what does that mean, Sean? If you download our Minecraft Church app, you'll notice as soon as you download our app and open it up, we have, uh, we have rock tools. And we put together about 30 different tools, books on worship, Bibles, devotionals for married couples, dating couples, Bibles for kids, books on worship, books on prayer. And every single book or every single devotional thought or anything on our app links directly to Amazon and you can purchase it. The other thing we did is I feel like we live in a biblical, illiterate culture today. And I thought, how cool would it be at the end of the year if our church knew scripture? So every month, we have these little key tags. You'll get one every single month. You got your, if you weren't here last week, you didn't get it, you can get it this week at the Connect table. And what they are is they're Bible verses for you to memorize. So you have one that you got last week. If you didn't get it, get it this week. And the first of every month, you'll get a new one. And at the end of the month, you'll collect them. And this is uh, Jeremiah 29, 11. Some of you already know that one, but I thought, what a very cool verse for us to memorize in January. Next month month, we're going to do Psalms 23, 1 through 19, but that'll be fine. You'll memorize it. I wanted to give us an easy one. This I'm just kidding. It won't be. But, but you can memorize it. And at the end of the year, you'll have 12 verses memorized. But, but it's, it's, we're, trying, we're trying to let our church know, man, we're going to be passionate. We're going to rock with the rock. We're, we're, going, to be, we're going to rock with passion and rock in purpose. So that's so you'll probably hear more rock stuff this this year, more rock songs this year. So I hope hope you like it. If you don't, get used to it. And uh, <laughs> our whole theme is rock, and rock is an acronym I put together this year for what we're gonna do to practice the practical. I talked last week about relishing in the presence of God, savoring the moment. We live in a culture of rush, and so we want to hurry and get to church and get out of church. But how cool would it be if we just were? I just, I just can't wait to get in the presence of God. I don't care if there's a storm coming. I can't wait to get to church. I want to get there early. I want to leave late. I just want to relish in the presence of God. The O is we're going to overflow with God's love. We're going to overflow with God's love. The C is we're committing to God's people. How cool would it be if the church actually loved the church? How cool would it be if we actually took care of the needs of our brothers and sisters? And then the K is know God's word. We're gonna know God's word this year. We're gonna dive into the word and we're gonna know God's word. We're gonna practice the practical. And at the end of the day, we're gonna rock this year. Passionate about the things of God. So last week I talked about relishing in the presence of God. This week I wanna talk about how we overflow with God's love. Now, um, let's just be honest. Love is hard, isn't it? Can I get a witness? Like, love is easy to the people that are easy to love, right? Love is hard to the unlovable. Some of you, as soon as I brought that up, many of you had a person's face come to your mind. And, and you're just like, oh, I know who you're talking about. So this sermon is for how we show love to them. Because you know what the Bible says? The world will know we are Christians by our the way we love each other. The world will know that we are followers of Jesus not by what we say, but by what we do. And so many people are turned off by the church today because of what the church has shown. How cool would it be if this year we live in such a way that people may not know the purpose of our church, but they go, I'm gonna go to that church because it's not a big church, but they love big. They just overflow with God's love. First John chapter four says this, dear friends, let us continue to love one another for love comes from God. Anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God, but anyone who does not love does not know God. Now I wanna stop right there. That is a bold statement. John says, if you don't love, you don't know God. What does that word mean, Sean? That word, no. Does that mean I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know who he is? I can I cannot love people and know who God is. That word love means to have a relationship with and a deep basis. If you don't really love people, then he says, then you don't really love God. 
Because God is love. And if you have God living inside of you, the love of God should overflow out of you onto everyone around you, just not the easy to love. The Bible says God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. This is real love. Not that we loved God, but that he first loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. Dear friends, since God loved us that much, we surely ought to love each other. Love is a crazy thing, isn't it? Let's be honest, love is mysterious. Love can go from exciting to exhausting to expired in a week. Remember the old, old days, like middle school, high school, you met a new friend and they were like your best friend. You're like, you, you were so excited, you're like, I just met my new best friend. They're my best friend of the whole world. And, and then you go from exciting to exhausting in a week because you're like, they just won't shut up. <laughs> and then you go from exciting to exhausting to exiting the relationship very quickly. Or, or, or uh, remember when you were in uh, middle school and, and you, you like somebody? guys or girls, and, and you like them, and you're going to get married to them after you met them for 10 minutes in the hallway, and you write their, their name all over your folder, and you're just like, oh my gosh, I'm so in love. This is so exciting. And, the, and then you, you call them at night when you get home, and you're like, no, you hang up. No, you hang up. No, you hang up. No, you first. I knew you weren't going to do it. Stop it. And, and then you, you, it goes from exciting to exhausting, to like a week later, they do stuff that drives you, like they chew with their mouth open, you're like, oh, I'm over you. How did I ever think this was gonna work? And so you, 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 the relationship is expired. It goes, from, it goes from exciting to exhausting to expired so, so fast. And, and it, is, it is one of those things that love is so mysterious. But what if you and I could define how we would love in such a way that it lasts a lifetime? I mean, in our marriages, in our friendships, in our, in our church relationships, uh, with, our, with our, our, our spouses, our coworkers, our, our friends at school. Imagine if we loved in such a way that it was, it was a much deeper love than a two-hour Hallmark movie. It was a much deeper love than a, than a junior high friendship. It was, it, was a deep, it was a deep love. But I really believe for us to, to clearly understand how to overflow with God's love, two things have to happen. Number one, we have to define love clearly. You know why? Because our culture has defined love in a different way. And it kind of makes us a little messed up in the head because if you looked at culture and gauged how you should love based on culture, it's weird. And so we have to define it clearly and then we have to deliver it constantly. But first we have to learn how, how to really define love. And this is why, why love is, is so weird, because we use the word love for so many things. I love my wife. I love my husband. I love my church. I love my dog. I love my cat. I love God. I love pizza. I love apple pie. I love my kids. I love my car. I love dream sickles. By the way, I love dream sickles. Oh, my gosh. Orange on the outside. That, oh, that's loved. Oh, but... Imagine, sorry, I got, off tan I got excited about dream sickles. We use love for so many things, and, and so here's what happens. Because we use the word love for so many different things, well, I, I love God, and I love dream sickles. I love Teresa, and I love dream sickles. Well, I hope you don't love dream sickles the same way you love Teresa. You see, but, but because we, we don't know what that word love truly means, it, it can't be clearly defined. It's very, very confusing. And the reason why is because the world has convoluted the word love. Let me give you some misconceptions about love. Can I, some misunderstandings. The world says love is a feeling. Love is a feeling, it's just not, it's not right, honey. <laughs> it's just a feeling. It's just, now, can I say this? Love is more than a feeling. It will affect your feelings, but it's just not feelings. Here's why it's so dangerous to just think that love is a feeling. Because so many people today, when they think love is a feeling, what that means is when they don't feel love anymore, they walk away from the relationship. If love is just a feeling, then when you come into church today, if you've never given your heart to Christ, and you're like, oh, I felt Jesus today, come into my heart, I will make room for you. 
and then you leave today because you felt Jesus, and then tomorrow you get hit with something, and you're like, I didn't feel him. I'm done with that Jesus guy. It's, it's, it affects your feelings, but it's more than a feeling. More than a feeling. It's it, more than a feeling. <laughs> Misconception. It's, and, and, and another misconception for the world is that love is uncontrollable. Love is uncontrollable. What that means is this. You don't have the money to buy a new car, but you go look at a new car, and you drive the new car, and you go, oh, I love it. I have to have it, but I can't afford it, but I love it. I just can't help myself. And so you get it, and three months later, you put yourself in a financial bind. You know why? Because you just, ooh, I just love it. I have to have it. This happens the same way in relationships. You ever heard somebody say, I just fell into love? Oh, there it is. <laughs> I hate when people say that, because if you fall into it, you can easily fall out of it. It, it, it affects it affects your feelings, but for us to say love is, can I say how I want to say it? Let me, let, me, let, me, let me talk to those dating for a second. Can I talk to the dating world for a second? This is why I always tell people, be careful who you date because you never know when you're going to fall in love. And so if we go by the world's standards that love is uncontrollable, then what happens is you date someone for a few months that is horrible, but because you think love is uncontrollable, you can't help yourself and I just can't get out of it. No, no, it's not, it's not uncontrollable, but the world has lied to you. There's, there's a worldly standard to define love, that love is uncontrollable, that love is a feeling, but there's a biblical standard of love. Let me give you the biblical understanding of love. The Bible says that love is a choice. It's a choice. Colossians 3, Paul says this, above all, clothe yourself. Somebody say clothe yourself. Clothe yourselves with what? Love which binds us all together in perfect harmony. I love that he says, clothe yourself. You know why I love the fact that love is a choice? You choose. It's a command from God, but you choose whether you follow it or not. And God would never give you a command you couldn't follow through with. But we think it's, 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 a, it's a command. I get it, but Sean, you just don't know them. They're just not that lovable. And Paul says, clothe yourself. This morning, I guarantee you, all of you put on your own clothes. I mean, this is like a Saturday night routine. Teresa will come to me and say, can I wear this tomorrow? How about these shoes? And so many times I'll say, don't wear those shoes. Wear another pair of shoes. And then she wears the shoes she wants to wear. And I'm thinking, why'd you ask me anyway? And so... She, she wears the other shoes. Do you know why? Because she had the choice. I told her what I thought she should wear, but at the end of the day, she made the choice for what she wanted to wear. And Paul says, choose to clothe yourself. Many of us today got up and clothed ourselves in hatred. We clothe ourselves in rage, in bitterness, in frustration. In, we clothe ourselves in something besides love. And Paul says, just as easy as you woke up this morning and clothe yourself in jealousy, you could take that off and clothe yourself in love. It's a, it's a choice. Love is a choice, but only, only if you choose it. Now, the, the Bible says that love is a choice, but the Bible also says that love is demonstrated through action. Love is a choice, but love is demonstrated through action. First John says this, dear children, let us not merely say that we love each other. Let us show. This is where the church has gotten a bad rap because we talk about how we love the world, but we don't show our love to the world. We talk about how all are welcome, but we don't show how all are, are welcome. So he says, let's don't talk about how we love people. Let's actually show them. I mean, I mean, listen how actions speak loud of the words. Imagine for a second, Teresa and I get up every single morning and we do our devotions. And, and after we do our devotions, we hold hands and we pray. And imagine every single morning, and we do our devotions, we hold our hands, we pray. And Teresa says, I love you. And I say, I love you. And then she flicks me in the head. I love you so much. Bah! What's Babe, I hear the words that are coming out of your mouth but my head hurts. I think the world 
has experienced from the church us saying, we love you. We love you. We love you. And so they hear the words from the church that they're loved, but they don't say the response from the church that they're loved. And what a cool thing would it be for us, Anchor, if this year we were rocking with the passion to overflow with God's love, that we're just not gonna tell you we love you, we're gonna show you how much we love you. Now, can we, can we, can we practice the practical? Can we get really practical? So we, we, we defined it, right? So, so we know that it's a choice. We know it's, it's delivered through action. Well, what are the actions then? Anyone wanna know how you love? I mean, I, I really do. I, I wanna know how can we practice the practical and love people well this year? I have to go to 1 Corinthians 13 in the New Testament. It's the love chapter, the love chapter. And I just read this scripture in a wedding a couple weeks ago. And when I read this scripture, I'm like, I've never really read it with this intensity, but I read it because of the couple I was marrying. I was thinking about all the things that they do in that passage to love each other. I'm like, this is a message for the church. Because 1 Corinthians 13 gives us this example of, of how to demonstrate love. It says love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It's not irritable and it keeps no record of being wrong. It does not rejoice about injustice but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. Love is lived out by action. It's lived out by action. So how do you and I deliver love? The first thing it says is we deliver love through time. Time. First Corinthians 13, four. Love is the word we all hate. Do you know how you spell patient? T-I-M-E. Anyone ever feel like today, you're in such a rush that even when you're not in a rush, you're in a rush? You know what I'm talking about? It's like you, you, you get ready for work 20 minutes early, but you're still stressed. You're not gonna be on time. We, we've created such a, a mentality that we're always rushing. Like you get behind someone at a stoplight, and if the person, when the light turns green, doesn't go negative seconds after the light turns green, you honk at them and tell them a few things. I don't, I, I don't do that, I just, I've seen it done. <laughs> this happens to us on, like on Sunday mornings where, where Teresa and I, we, the same time, we, we, we have a routine, we get up, we, and, and there's sometimes where Teresa gets ready, like it's the same time we're leaving the house at the same time every Sunday, but sometimes she'll get ready a little faster, and I'm still on the right time, but because she's ready early, she's like this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drive separately. <laughs> well, are we, are we uh, don't we leave it? I know, but it's just, I'm. I'm... <laughs> and in my, I don't say it out loud, but I'm thinking in my head, I never would say it out loud. <laughs> but I'm thinking in my head, we, I just did, I know, I'll pay for it later. Um, but, 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 but I'm thinking in my head, why are you mad at me for leaving at the same time we always leave? There must have been something in your mind you needed to rush for. Think about this. Now, I'm, think about it in regards to time, but think about it in regards to people around you that give their heart to Jesus Christ but don't have such a dramatic shift as quickly as you did in your journey. And you're so mad at them. I can't believe them. Sean is still listening to Van Halen. He's been a Christian for five years. What, what is wrong with him? Does he not know Jesus? It's just taking me some time. What, what, what is it? If, if you think about the patience that Jesus has for you, it'll give you patience for somebody else. I talk to people who go, the Lord just needs to come back right now. Our world is going to hell in a handbasket. Why isn't Jesus coming back? Do you know why he's not coming back right now? Because he is being patient so that everyone would come to faith in him. So when we go, why won't Jesus just come back? I'm like, because he's being patient for those that he wants to take with him. And if we did our job, maybe he'd come faster. 
It's, it's patience, having a little patience. Ephesians 4, Paul says, always be humble and gentle and be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. So we deliver love through just being patient. Some of us, that's what we gotta work on for this whole year, right? Patient. Some of you, let's be honest, you gotta be patient with Anchor Church. I mean, we're going into, we, we just, we're going into our third year, right? Third, like, we're in our two, two and a half years of the church, and sometimes people get so frustrated at us because we still don't have our own building yet, and they're like, I can't believe Anchor doesn't have this and this and this, and I can't believe that they don't have a kid's area that's four stories high and roller coasters. I just can't believe they don't have that stuff. I can't believe they don't have a coffee bar, and I'm like, we're lucky we have a microphone and a drum set. <laughs> like, we're, 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 we're new. Like, patience, patience. I, I, you know, it's patience. I can't believe it's January. Sean's wearing a pink jacket. What is wrong with that guy? I don't know. I don't know. Patience, patience. We, we, we deliver love through patience. First Corinthians 13, we deliver love through meeting needs. First Corinthians 13, it says, be patient and kind. This is the word we all hate. Patience and I gotta be kind. Mm -mm, not in my agenda. Patient and, you know what kindness means? It's the ability to care for others in the practical details of everyday life. It's the person at your job that you can't stand taking them a coffee tomorrow. Why, why would you do that? This thing at my church. Kind. Isn't it interesting? We can be kind to strangers, but can't be kind to the people close to us in our family. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Like you could be yelling at your kids in the car, you, I, and the phone rings, hello. <laughs> what? How, you know what I'm talking about? It's like you could be kind to every single person except the people close to you that probably need it the most. As a matter of fact, there's some people that know you gave your heart to Christ living in your family and they don't want to come to Christ because of the way you treat them. <laughs> right? Ephesians 4.32, instead be kind to each other, tender-hearted, forgiving one another just as God through Christ forgave. But Sean, you don't know them. They don't deserve no kindness. <laughs> Neither do you. <laughs> Every time we think they don't deserve that coffee, <laughs> you don't deserve life. Kindness, meeting needs. How do we deliver love? I gotta run through it. Here we go. Meeting, patience, time, kindness. How do we meet needs? Confidence. How do we love people with, 1 Corinthians 13, 4, love is not jealous or boastful or proud. When I read the words jealous, boastful, proud, one word comes to my mind, insecurity. The reason why many of us have a hard time loving other people is because you're insecure about how great they are and insecure about how good they are and make you look so bad. Many of us have dumped friendships because they were better than we were, and so we don't want to be around them because they were better than we were, and you showed them what a horrible friendship looks like because you were just jealous. How many relationships between couples have ended because they were in, that person's talking to my man. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Well, if your man goes with them, then let him go with them. You just gotta be positive in who you are. You can't be insecure. You, you can't, insecurity will kill a church. Insecurity will kill a friendship. Insecurity will kill a marriage. Insecurity will kill, a, it'll kill it, kill it. And every time you compare, you lose. Because you compare to someone else and you're better than they are, so pride sets in and you lose because the Bible says God hates pride. Or you compare yourself to them and they're better than you and you feel insecure, so you lose. So when you compare, you lose. 
How about if you and I just relish in who God made us to be and go, I don't care what you think. I care what God thinks. And all I know is the creator of the universe loves me and made me, so I might not be as cool as you, but I'm as cool as he made me to be. Do you know when I was at, uh, on staff at a church out in California called Saddleback, I was the, the, youth, the youth pastor, and we had a guy on our team named Jake, and Jake was hilarious. And Jake would speak, and Jake was so dang funny, and the kids afterwards would go, oh, Jake, Pastor Sean, why aren't you funny like Jake? <laughs> We sent him to, to another church, but um, and when, when they first told me, you know what, I got bothered by it. I, and then I started, then I, started oh, I have to be funny in my sermons. And, and then, then when you try to be funny, crash and burn. And finally, what I had to realize was God made Jake who Jake is. God made me who I am. And, and here's, if I would have been so insecure in that, guess what happened? I would, I would not be able to stand in front of you today and preach because I'd be so nervous about, hope I'm funny, hope they like me. I don't care if you like me. I care that I deliver the message God gave me. It's the security. It's the confidence. It's the confidence. It's not jealous. It's not prideful. We deliver love through time. We deliver love through kindness, through confidence. We deliver love through sacrifice. First Corinthians 13, it's not rude. It doesn't demand its own way. It doesn't demand. Look at that. It doesn't demand. Many of us don't know how to love because you demand something of somebody else. There's two different kinds of relationship. There's I, I live. I live to give for you. And there's one that I live to get from you. Think of the model that Jesus gave us. The relationship we have is like, I live to give. It doesn't demand. It doesn't demand its own way. It doesn't demand what it wants. It doesn't demand. It, 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 it surrenders. Man, imagine if we as a church this year just said, wow, I just want to be patient with people kind of people, confident in who God made me to be, sacrifice what I want to do what he wants and just love the unlovable. Imagine what would happen in our church, in our region, in our area if we just loved. The last thing is this. The Bible says we have to be patient, confident, sacrifice, but how do we show love? Through determination. 1 Corinthians 13, 7, love never gives up, never loses faith. It's always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. What does that mean? When you don't want to love, you're determined to love. Because when you don't want to is probably the time when you should love the most. But Sean, you don't know them. Like, I seriously want to fight them. I understand. Give them a hug, see what happens. It's, it's the de determination that changes the corner. It's determination that changes the move. It's the determination that softens the heart. It's the, imagine if we as a church were like, I'm so determined this year, I'm gonna love people like I've never loved before, and they're gonna get blessed. At the end of the day, guess who gets blessed the most? Come on, stand your feet. Let me close with this story. Anybody feel challenged today? Anybody ready to rock and overflow with God's love? Yeah. Tebow's so serious right now. He's thinking, who's going to love today? Who's going to love today? I mean it with this. I was thinking about this this week as I was working on the sermon. I thought, has there ever been a time, because I love people, has there ever been a time in my life where I had to be determined to tell myself, you will, you will love, you will love, you will love? Years ago, when Teresa and I were out at Saddleback Church in, in California, I was the high school pastor out there. And every spring break, we took 500 high school kids to Ensenada, Mexico on a missions trip. Yeah, that's, that is a blast, let me tell you. That is fun. Taking 500 high school kids. And, and we took them to Mexico, and we, we stayed in Ensenada, Mexico. on It was like a, like a big five-acre land, and we took 500 kids and we set up tents, we called it Tent City. We set up tents all there, and then we would stay in tents with porta potties, no, no showers, no, like, just, we just, our whole goal was just to serve the people. 
Love the pastors, serve the kids. So you go a whole week, 40 degrees at night, staying in a tent. The only shower you have is wet wipes every morning. The only bathroom you have is a porta potty. And when you're sick, if you know what I'm saying, it's not the best. You got kids in the middle of the night waking up, opening their tent, getting sick, zipper breaks on your tent, and you're exhausted and you're tired. And the last thing in the world you want to do on three hours of sleep when you're shivering and you have diarrhea and you haven't showered is to go love on people. And I got to wake up every single morning in Ensenada and go, you're called to this. I'm determined. And what happened is, as I began to get in my determination, the ability to show more love, what happens is my heart began to soften in my determination to love. So maybe for many of us, the reason why right now we can't love is because you've determined yourself not to. But imagine if this was the year you were determined to not just love, but overflow with it. You ever taken a can of soda and shaken it up and then pop the top and it gets over everything? It's kind of fun when you're a kid, but when you're an adult and it happens, you're like, if that stains my clothes, I will kill you. <laughs> but imagine if we as a church decided that today we were gonna do this. And we walked outside today and we went to the people in our schools and our coworkers and our sports teams and our families and we just went like this. Love of God just exploded out of us onto all of them because we were just patient and kind and confident and loving and sacrificial and determined that this will be the year that we rock with the rock and we relish in the presence of God and we overflow in the love of God to everybody around us. I tell you right now, Anchor, we would be different. We would be different. But I love the Bible says, we love because he first. I can't do this, Sean. Yeah, you can. Because you can't, but he can through you if you let him. Come on, let's bow our heads. Man, I, I love this idea of God's love because that's, that's where it all started. It all started with us just needing God. Before you knew you needed God, he was coming for you. Well, Sean, what in the world would cause someone to do that? Love. Love. Maybe you're here today, maybe you're joining us in this room or joining us online, and you've never, you've never heard about God's love. All the things I was just talking about, patience and kindness and sacrifice, determination, that's all a picture of the love of God. First Corinthians is... 13 is just a picture of God's love for you. He's coming after you, and he loves you more than you can ever think, dream, or imagine, but he loves you way too much to let you stay how you are. He wants to come in if you make room and change. Change you from the inside out. If you're in this room, you're joining us online, you've never said yes to Jesus, there's a prayer that we pray that invites him into our lives. The Bible says when he comes in, he makes everything new. Your old life is gone, you have new life in Christ, but you have to say yes to Jesus. And if you would say yes to Jesus, on the count of three, I want you to be bold, and you might go, but Sean, if, you know, what, what happens if I acknowledge the fact that I want him? This place will go nuts for you is what will happen. On the count of three, if you wanna say yes, I need Jesus in my life, in this room or online, I want you to raise your hand. One, two, three, just raise your hand. Yeah, raise it up high, awesome, yeah, yeah, awesome, yes, awesome, yeah, awesome, yes, yes, awesome, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. We're all gonna pray this prayer out loud together, but if you raised your hands, you just say it a little bit louder, because this is the prayer that makes room for Jesus to change your life. Come on, just say, Dear Lord Jesus, I will make room for you. Make your home in my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of all I've done wrong. Make me brand new. I love you. And for the rest of my life, I'm determined to follow you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
Come on, Anchor, can we celebrate today? All those in here online that gave their heart to Christ. Come on, lift your hands up. Let's declare the goodness of our God. We're going to shake up the ground of our tradition, and we're going to praise Him. Come on. <laughs> 